I'm going. What's up, Houdat Nation, and thanks for joining us on the Dome Patrol podcast. I'm your host, Jeff, and my drunk skill rating is a zero, but I am drinking out of my homemade Saints mug tonight. And Jason, this is vodka and what? Uh, some some berry burst drink in there. <laughs> Grand Blackberry tonight. Okay, Grand I mean, it's, all, it's, it's always uh, something. Right. I, I did have beer yesterday, so... The, that was a man. All right. I know the bye week is good for players, which is why we fans are willing to make the sacrifice. And with the both LSU and the Saints having their bye week on the same weekend, I'd imagine that there were more weddings, bar mitzvahs, birthday parties, fundraisers, baby showers uh, all across Louisiana than any other week this fall. And the best news is both teams had two weeks to prepare for their rivals. Of course, the Falcons, however, have failed to deliver on their side of the bargain, making Sunday's game a tougher sell to the general audience. But with LSU battling Bama for the number one spot, obviously, uh, we figure there's no better guest to have on this week's show than LSU sports reporter Luke Chevalier. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'll say, was it drunk scale? Yes. Now, I'm not not sure if I'm still hungover from Saturday or I'm just excited to be on, but I'm at three. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 I'm not sure what it is, but I'm a three right now. <laughs> coming on strong. Yeah. That's right. He's coming on, you know, and that's higher than any of the other guests we've had of recent. Uh, but Jason, welcome to the show. What's your number? Um, I'm, I'm a zero, but I am. I do have the uh, the wine for wine down one day, and I did manage to bring the box with me upstairs. I know people were asking for it last week. That's right. The box so, has to not, make an appearance. You should do the box as your backdrop. Ah. Uh, I should, it's just all my empty, but just just make a shelf full of empty boxes. I like it. We you should know. do that. Everybody's ragging on it. Box wine gets a bad rap. It's not the the franzia of 25 years ago. Absolutely. <laughs> right. up. And then uh, I will say on the stream right now, I know of we have Scott watching, Adam Groves watching, Christian Mino, Falcons Hate Week. And so for those of you who are watching and are not my friends on Facebook, you can say hello. Don't forget, you can chime in at any time. I will interrupt anything Luke and Jason are saying out of context and say what you said. And that's how we do things around here. <laughs> it sounds good to me. It's like a delayed reaction with a live stream. So they're, you know, obviously we'll move on. They won't. All right. That's going to bring us to our first segment, which would be game recap. So instead, let's call it season midpoint recap. For the same question way. mark? That works. Yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, at Mordecai says, "Sup guys, who I hope Gun did not follow Mordecai's advice last week on Pickums because Mordecai went two and three. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, the first, I'll ask a quick question here, and y'all take it wherever you want to take it. So we know the Saints are better than the Falcons. Yeah. Um, slightly, slightly. It's a, yeah, it's just a fact at this point. And they're better than the Panthers and the Bucks too, obviously. Uh-huh. Uh, but so how would you present the case that they're better than the 49ers and the Packers? And, and take your fan hat off, right? You Try and, like, not just be like, because we're fucking better. Because like, well, we're okay. fucking better, Jeff. Yeah, okay. it's, it's pretty That's obvious. No, the, <laughs> the Packers just lost thing with the Chargers. And the Chargers, I don't know, the Chargers aren't good this year. They have, like, a ton of injuries. So I really don't think – I don't know how legit I feel the Packers are. But when I watch the 49ers play – their defense keeps them in games and they run the ball kind of like – well, not like the Ravens. The Ravens run the ball, but their defense keeps them in games and it's scary. But the Saints have gotten a lot of wins with two different quarterbacks. And I guess it's just the coaching, the scheme, and everything that happens. I feel like they're not going to lose any game they play. And they go into the game and I'm like, oh, we're winning this one. I just check it off at this point. <laughs> it's, it feels good. Like, do you have the games on your refrigerator and you use yeah, the and Sharpie? Like, well, and like, yeah, yeah. Yep. 15 and 1, that was easy. That's right. Chris Farmer joins us on a live stream. Evening, boys. Yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to watch a lot of San Francisco yet. Um, I mean, the, the win against Carolina, like we talked about, was, was impressive. I didn't see that coming. But I think if you want to be objective about the Saints compared to these other two teams, you just have to look at um, the competition that they played and how they've won. I mean, that we've, we've played uh, the first, what, four or five games of the year were against playoff teams from a year ago. Uh, and they were, they've just found different – ways to win it's not the same thing like the 2011 offense we just obliterated everybody we've we, we yeah. won with defense we've won with special teams we've won where breeze threw it around this week we won it with teddy threw it around one week so there's just a lot of different ways that, that the saints can beat you and yes there is a, a weakness at at receiver after michael thomas but other than that this appears to be the most complete team after in the league. Taysom hill 
Yeah, it, well, it, 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 yeah Taysom Hill's is his own. His I, mean, own well, I say it in joking fashion, but in reality, Taysom is a good receiver. Tight end, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it, right? Qu- quarterback. <laughs> yeah, anything. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, and you say the weakness is receiver, but why, why is that a weakness? Don't we throw for like 300? Why aren't we one of the – like every quarterback who plays, I mean, with, with uh, Teddy and Drew, I feel like they've had no problems throwing the ball. Maybe that has to do with whatever. I just feel like receiver I isn't think, that big of a weakness. I think you're right. I mean, I would agree with you that if you – I haven't felt like we struggled – to catch the ball. If there's a struggle right. in the passing game, it was Teddy throwing the ball too high or Teddy right. holding the ball too long. But the the guys who were whose job it was to catch, I, I mean, other than a couple of drops here and there, but that's right. normal. And we okay, have the I, best receiver in the NFL, who? We do, and I guess maybe it's a fear of, okay, look, Michael Thomas has been doing every – I mean, Michael Thomas could make – I mean, he, he won't get a sniff, but I mean, you could argue he's an MVP candidate with everything that he's right. done with the two different quarterbacks. I guess there's just a worry in the back of my head of, you know, if I mean, I, I'm clearly projecting down the line. I mean, look, at the end of the day, it's Super Bowl or bust. And if you go to the Super Bowl and you go against fucking Belichick, he's going to find a way to stop Michael Thomas. Then what do we do? So far, te- so far, teams haven't been able to do that, right. you know. But it, there's just a little worry that what happens if there's a game where somebody actually does. I mean, I know you can't guard Mike. But yeah, <laughs> there's there's just that 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 little bit of fear of or the what, other it, side. What, the other side of it is right. Yes, receiver is our weakest point, but it doesn't mean that it is a weak point, and that's how yeah. strong this team is. Yes. Uh, and I'll read the comment that Chris Farmer said: "It Saints are a deep team, and we're strong in all three phases." You're right. Robert Keith Haywood says, "Even who dance from Fort Belvoir, Virginia." Oh. And Greenbaum says, "The weakness at wide receiver is its depth." Which, which is what I believe y'all were just describing. Michael Thomas goes down, season's over. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why yeah, he, I, that goes into the candidacy for MVP. <laughs> Drew Brees goes down, we still win. Apparently. <laughs> wow. Who would have thought that? <laughs> Sean Payton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So that, there you have that. All right. At, next question is, as the season progresses... The team is going to get more and more national media attention, all that kind of stuff, right? So how – I want you to be the head coach, okay? Again, don't say what Sean Payton's going to do. What would you do? How would you keep this team from letting that become a distraction, letting that go to their – that kind of go to their head and, and lose focus? What would you say to them? What would you do? How would you set the tone? Okay, well, first off, it shouldn't fall on the head coach. Oh. It shouldn't fall on the head coach. They're professionals. At this point, you know, a lot of the guys have been playing football for whatever, 10, 15 years of their lives, and I'm sure they've gotten some attention at some point. And if they're going into their job and they're scrolling through Twitter all day and reading what people have to say, Kevin Durant, then they're going to have problems the longer that they play. Like, <laughs> it's going to become an issue at some point if you can't figure out how to do that. So if you're a good player, then you're not going to let that get to you. You know what? Whatever you do, speak for itself. It's and I, and so I, and I, I think you just gave me that speech, and I feel yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jason, you're the player then, as Luke put it. How are well, you I mean, I, that, how do you block that out, and how do you stay focused? I mean, these guys, the guys in this locker room. I mean, they've done it before. They did it in 2017. They did it in 2018. Right. And you know, they've th- this group is so good that they're not gonna let it happen. They they know after the way the last two seasons shook out. Like they they know what the ultimate goal is. They are all laser focused, and Peyton's got them laser focused. I, yeah. I just think it, it's it's the group in the locker room. You don't have a bunch of a bunch of knuckleheads, you know, doing stupid shit and 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 losing focus, worrying about Twitter followers or Instagram followers or any of that nonsense. They have one shared goal as a team, and they, and you got a guy like Breeze leading that locker room. I mean, hell, you yeah. saw the the pregame speech he gave to uh, he gave to Purdue this weekend. I would have run through a wall. Yeah, it gave me chills. I was, yeah. I was, I was and, ready and, to go. And, and Purdue goes out and wins. And Purdue's not a good team. No. So. I, I just think that the 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 players that they have they're they're not going to allow it to happen. Right, we don't right. need to worry about Peyton giving them a peck talk. They they're they're all grown mature adults. I'm a grown ass man. All right, as Gunn put it yesterday. <laughs> a grown time. ass man. Right. When you talk about Murray, <laughs> present. Yeah, you like that. All right. Let me read some of the comments there. What our viewers would do. 
uh, Mordecai, remember when Peyton brought the Super Bowl trophy and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the locker room to motivate motivate the players last season? That's what I'd do. Yeah, good point. Good move. Adam Gross says he likes to do skits of some sort. In the past, he did the whole "Don't eat the cheese" thing. Greenbaum said, "Show the no pi clip from the NFC Championship game on a loop." Oh, <laughs> please don't. Oh God. Yeah. And then, of course, you got to show the clip of the girl uh, telling Drew Brees what he could do with his thumb. <laughs> Jam yeah. it up his butt. Yeah. yeah, you remember yeah. that? She goes, I know what booty what else? put that thumb in. <laughs> what else you do with your thumb? Right. Oh, God. All right, that was Scott's <laughs> favorite video. All right, next question. Go ahead, go ahead. Next question. During the bye week, players visited, some of the players visited their alma maters. Drew Brees went to Purdue. I don't know if y'all saw the, the pep talk that he gave the guys in the locker room. Uh, somebody had tweeted to us. He was like, I was all for it until I saw him like clap. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, and then uh, did you see Teddy strut his stuff uh, at his school? And which one, <laughs> which video do you wish was taken down off the internet? <laughs> I'll let you, you go first, Jason. I, 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 Teddy living his best life, man. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Teddy's got personality. Well, and and that's another thing. Like this, this team has a swagger about them, and I fucking love it. I, I really do love. You know, they're having fun. They know they're good. They're focused. Just a great fucking group to be a to, to be a fan of. You know, to get to enjoy watching these guys, and that's that's why at the end of the year, like you want them to win the Super Bowl so so. I want this group to win a Super Bowl so bad. Yeah. You know, like Cam, like Cam Cam Jordan. I want Cam Jordan to win a Super Bowl so bad. They they seem to balance like having fun and being focused and going out winning games and I guess that's just due to the fact that they're really really good um but to answer the question I thought Teddy's dancing was kind of weak the girls in the video the cheerleaders they were a lot better than he was and the dance team they were a lot better than Teddy was I like Drew Brees video a lot better thank you like, I got excited I was like hold on hold on a second I was like wait I got goosebumps on top of my yeah. goosebumps you know? yeah I'm I mean, picturing myself right. as a receiver so I can go out there and make big plays I think that's what he told me to do <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I was what like, like he, he called out to call out each right. individual. Yeah, well, yeah. it looked like, like Teddy's hands were in his pocket too. Like he, you can't get free with your hands in your pocket. No, you know? right. right. He's had a and he had a long time to practice. Although it does take him a little while to warm into it, I guess. Right. Yeah. That's a bad wow. joke about it. Okay, yeah, I know where you were getting right. at. And then uh, another question. So today or yesterday, Popeyes brought back the chicken sandwich. I don't know. Raise your hand if you've had one since then. Oh, since they brought it back? Yeah. yeah. Have, you yeah. Had, have you had one, though? Yes, I've had one. Okay. Jason, I know you've had one. Um, Deshaun Watson credited the Popeye's chicken sandwich with fixing his eye. And then who was it? Y'all said who's wearing the Popeye's cleats? Stephon Diggs? Uh, yeah, Stephon Diggs was wearing the cleats. Well, he tried to wear, He showed him on Twitter, but the NFL wouldn't allow him to wear it because it didn't match his uniform. <laughs> yeah. the, you he know, should be playing for Tampa Bay in the 1990s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I had another one today, and I will, I'll tell you a quick little story there, anecdote here. Um, I was nervous because as I was ready to eat it, I was all excited, and then all of a sudden this thought came over my head where I was like, you know what, what if it's not as good as I remember? What if the, just the, the memory of the sandwich is better than right. the actual sandwich? And then you bite into it, you're like, wait a minute, this is just another chicken sandwich. I fell for the hype. <laughs> And then I bit into it. No, yeah. <laughs> let me tell you, it is the best chicken sandwich you've ever had. Oh my gosh, it's so. Good. How do you make a chicken breast that thick, that big, bigger than the bun, and, yeah. and cook it thoroughly and not dry it out? Like it's juicy, it's moist, and then the outer crispy layer and all the Popeye seasoning and the two pickles. And the pick those those are some yeah, giant yeah. ass pickles too. Two pickles. <laughs> And, and Look, the sauce, oh, the sauce, it's a good, the sauce, and a little sauce drips, and you, oh, it, it, it's just, yeah. yeah, no, you cannot bring your own bun and put some chicken tenders on it, it is different, it is different. It just hits different, it just hits different, and no, I, when, when, when I first had it, we, we had to wait like an hour for it, and I was like, is this really worth it, and my friend already had it, he's like, dude, it's worth it, so I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll wait long, but I'm like, you're paying for it if it's over an hour. So luckily, it was like an hour ten. He pays for it. I'm like, all right, what, what do I have to lose? Even more. Work. What do I have to lose? A good chicken sandwich? 
It was it was so good. It was the best. It was the best hour and ten minutes I ever waited for that damn chicken sandwich. <laughs> it was so good. It's like waiting uh, for the Star Wars tickets, except you weren't let down by Phantom Menace, right, Jason? Exactly. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's that's correct. Long before the 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 internet and per- well, the internet was around, but long before you could purchase tickets online for a movie. But the one thing about the Bob Ice thing is, I was worried that because it was, you know, the the, the, the hype was just insane because it was gone for a while. Would that hype still return, or would it be like, man, oh, chicken sandwich is back? But right. no, you see the pictures and the videos of yeah. lines, you know, wrapped around the building, going into the street. So apparently, it is like nothing, nothing changed, other than yeah, they didn't have it for six weeks. They're that good. Right. They really are. And like Mordecai's asking, is Dome Patrol podcast sponsored by Popeyes now? I want my promo code. <laughs> Love that chicken for Popeyes. Oh yeah, I think everyone's sponsored by Popeyes now. Everyone's sponsored by Popeyes. Dude, people are just. It, that's how good the sandwich is. Is that you? Yeah, everybody yeah. is willing to just give them free publicity. It's that. Mm-hmm. It, like they're. And here's my also other words? question. Yes, right. it's speechless. Ch- my chicken other... got your tongue? <laughs> <laughs> Why the chicken cross the road? To get on my sandwiches, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> to lather up in that Popeye seasoning. <laughs> No, but all right. So why did they have to go on break for so long? Did they literally have to buy another chicken farm because they? I mean, you you can't rush chickens to grow. So did they literally? And I imagine my in my world, Popeyes owns their own chicken farms to save money. Yeah. I mean, that's my half, half to. I own them. Yeah, for sure. Farm. Yeah. And so they just. I mean, I mean, you're you're you're, you're no Gus Fring, but right. you know you understand the business. <laughs> sure. they, they must I'm have happy. had to go out and buy another chicken farm or wait for chickens to like grow and proliferate and and or just more. okay hold on we, we need to, we need to get our, our steroid shipments in so we can just pump them all <laughs> something <laughs> gh or whatever i don't know but yeah so hopefully they're back forever and they're not going to pull this stunt like fucking mcdonald's does with the mcrib oh it's only going to come once every playoff season or something okay. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> no but really what? What, what they did was what? i heard they had a problem with like the sh- like shipping them like they literally couldn't ship enough, and they like the, the way they had like a I'm sure they had a business model. They're big enough, mm-hmm. and uh, they couldn't ship enough, so they were like, "Let's not like cut it bare thin to where they run out every day. Let's remodel it and then push them all out again." Mm-hmm. And, oh, that then that, that would be <coughs> smart because you would I think you would run into too many too much negative publicity if you run out yeah. every day, and rather right. like you know what no no we're gonna stop. Well, because clearly they didn't, you know, the, the demand way exceeded what they had anticipated. They they had a schedule, had a model. Oh shit, this ain't gonna work. We got we got to rethink everything. They hired so, employees for this relaunch. Additional yeah. employees for every store to handle the 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 load. Hmm. Uh, which you know, and this is the kind of thing that you expect from a Louisiana fast food restaurant. That that efficiency, that smart decision making you know again rather than <laughs> sell out every day we're gonna do whatever chick-fil-a on the other hand maybe like an atlanta-based company would have screwed the pooch on this they would have sure. totally screwed it up they would have burnt everything run out and then stumbled on their way out fumbled the chicken nuggets if you will and her and, and they would have been closed on sunday so you couldn't bring your complaints to them on a sunday <laughs> <laughs> and then popeyes goes and does it on a sunday it like brings them back on the day that Chick Fil A is closed. And the only thing that would have made it better is if they'd have waited for next week when the Saints are playing Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry on top. That's right. All right. So that's enough about Popeyes. Uh, Greenbaum does say that they did say it will not go away, and they had to hire 400 new employees to handle the crowd. All right. At this point, we're going to switch topics since Luke, you're here. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh. 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 Uh oh. Tigers. LSU segment of the week. Which way does oh, it Oh, shit. Go? All right. There we go. Get it straight. All right. All right. Welcome to the Go Tigers podcast. Right. <laughs> Real quick, I want to hear everybody's best Coach O impression. And, of course, for this segment, anytime you say anything, you have to conclude it with Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Don't patrol. Podcast. Go Tigers. <laughs> Well, wait, I always picture Coach O on the bye week. I'm going to make them boys too much gumbo. They ain't too much gumbo puke on the field. The coach, coach, why'd you feed them gumbo? Them boys needed it. Coach, we, you can't feed them gumbo on the bye week. We got Bama. It's good for your heart. <laughs> Girl, coach, that's just, filled with, that's just filled with sodium. Sorry. Well, ba- that's okay. Sodium Back in my day. Sodium ain't done nothing to me. You, you- <laughs> 
eat that sodium back when I played it. Just pop us up with salt pills. <laughs> gumbo, ta- gumbo tastes a lot better than salt pills. <laughs> That's not hydrochloride. <laughs> go Tigers. That's yeah, the be- tigers. you know the best thing is that with Coach O's voice and you throw it in like with the most like intelligent vocabulary that you can. You've got a great character mm-hmm. for Saturday Night Live or something or Simpsons oh, or yeah. whatever you know. It's like well, we did, we proliferation did. of the chickens which would permit me Popeyes to sign. They couldn't do <laughs> extrapolate did, on the uh, higher end of the extra. <laughs> We did Coach O versus Coach O versus closed captioning. You ever seen that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they get they get what like YouTube thinks he says, and then you hear what he actually. You think you hear what he actually says. Right. Might not even know the word. Right. <laughs> it's not close. <laughs> right, yeah. It's like the uh, water boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Leave it that and then they. <laughs> all right, let's talk about LSU then, Luke. All right, you recently posted a video on your Twitter feed or the LSU okay. Sports Twitter Twitter feed about his yeah. reaction to players getting compensation, right? Compensated and whatnot. Were you at that press conference where he made comments on it? What were his comments and or what were what are your take on what's your take on players receiving compensation for so, their brand? Um, I personally don't think that i know enough about the whole like the whole thing and the way everything like it would trickle down to that but i do know that there aren't many people that play the sport or you know in the ncaa like as athletes and making the product that are against it so when college game day came in town i talked to reese davis and he talked about how it's like absurd they can't use their name their uh image and likeness i mean coach joe is like i'm all for the players and now he's like what to get that Coach O said he was. <laughs> I was all for it. I need all. I need all them players. You know, they got. I've been making too much damn gumbo. I can't pay for this myself. And then, I'm, and then I was really confused about the gumbo. But uh, <laughs> and then, uh, right. I, I was yeah. like, well, that's his calling card. I was the gumbo. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, oh, just the gumbo. No. And then Joe Burrow talks about it. And they, everyone's for it, so I'm for it. They know more than me. So all right, all right, all right. You're for it, okay? <laughs> Jason, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm definitely for it, you know. Um, I mean, there's 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 so much money in, in college athletics, and yeah, they'll say, oh, well, yeah, they get a scholarship, that's enough. Well, you know, especially like like big time football cr- programs generate so much money for the entire you know athletic department. Then you got you know guy on the street buying a, a seven LSU jersey, or whatever. Like you know, it's four because nine. it's it's for it's for net, <laughs> you know, yeah. and and for net gets none of that, and but the, the school gets all of it, so. I mean, you're you're you are selling things based on some of the players on on the team. Now, look, it's not, you know, the 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 backup offensive lineman. I mean, he's not going to see anything. He's not generating right. anything. So it's you know, it's not going to be it's not going to be everybody. But I do feel the NCA is is so hypocritical on the fucking transfer portals <laughs> that when they when they when they don't let people you know, transfer, the whole the whole thing is a sham. And at least let them earn money for their name image and likeness like if, if they're, they're like if they're selling something and it's oh uh you know a joe burrow jersey or a joe burrow's gloves that he uses the same kind or his face is on something and that's what's going to generate the money then at least let him get money for like it. a plastic like, joe burrow ass for a halloween costume yeah no at least at least let them get some, something. Sorry, something. Yeah, I agree. Something. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and if you're uh, if you're a player, do you is that enough for you? Versus the idea of you getting paid for your performance on the field, paid to play at the school where the school's gonna pay blue chip athletes or something. You know, I mean, because isn't that a slippery slope if you go in that it direction? Is. No, it, it is. It is. I will say the one thing, though, that would be nice to look at is so a lot of the players, you know, for football or maybe basketball, basketball, they're one and done or football, they leave for three years. If you do somehow compensate these athletes, some of them will probably stay, which would then in turn make the product greater when you have better players that stay longer, you know. So, like, when you have someone like, I don't even know, Zion, if Zion was at Duke for four years, NCAA's ratings would be through the roof. But he leaves yeah. after one year, and you get a whole new uh, shipment of people. Uh, like I just looked at the mock draft for 2020, and I hadn't heard of but three of the players. Well, by the end of the year, but 
Right, but I yeah, yeah, wait, it's especially basketball because everybody's one and gone. Like it, it's hard to get into basketball because yeah. oh, you you get you fall you get to know somebody and then yep, they're gone and then the NBA. Yes. You know they can't they can't stick around and the product definitely does suffer for it. Right. And Mordecai says, "I just want a new NCAA football game." Green, Please. Green bomb said Please. the same thing. Just bring back the game. <laughs> the I, I'd, for I'd, that, right? I'd spend two hundred dollars on my game today. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. I'm in college. That's a lot of money. For me right right now. Like, yeah. It's like all of your beer money. So right. Yeah. The, I don't do that. I don't drink beer. The idea of the, the <laughs> players earning money off of their own name, number or whatever, to me is fair enough, at least because if you've got, it, it kind of rewards you for your own work ethic on both right. the performance on the field side, as well as your ability to hustle to make a buck. You know what I mean? Like right. I'm going to, I'm going to, and it incentivizes performance, and it's and it, it it balances football with soccer or baseball, softball, basketball, women's sports, men's sports, anything. I mean, if you have the ability to get a, an endorsement deal, even a local endorsement deal for a local restaurant right. or something, rouses. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to work that out because it, everybody wins, you know. Unless it was, I mean, I'm going to switch over to the Saints real quick. Unless you're oh. Alvin Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> that, you, you, that, that looks like if Les Miles was a Saints coach. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Alvin Kamara who does a – I don't know if you all see this commercial, but up here in Alexandria we get the Laborde Earls the law firm commercial. He's the worst actor ever. Mm-hmm. Alvin, I love love you on the field, but you, you're not going to be in any Dwayne Johnson movies. <laughs> no. I don't think he wants to be. He probably was oh, – No, because he's probably – his agent told him. You're not, We're just you're gonna not do like it. photo endorsements yeah, for magazines yeah. and uh-huh. websites yeah. and stuff. But yeah, we're done with the video shit. All right, next question, LSU. That's what we're talking about. That's right. Go Tigers. You still got that hat on? Yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't say the hat not, yeah. Yeah. Why, Jason? You go first on this one, uh, just to change it up. Why should we believe, with all sincerity, that LSU will beat Bama? And again, don't go the route. Cause it's really the LSU. <laughs> No, because they have the Come offense on. that yeah. they they have an offense that can can actually score points against good teams. You have a little faith in them, and that's the one thing that's held them back. As good as our teams have been, like Saban barely had the game plan for our offense. He knew what was coming. He knew what was coming all the time. And no matter, we've got NFL talent on the offense. It didn't matter. You're just going to run right into him. He's got all his NFL defensive linemen. He knows – he. I mean, he doesn't have to think. And now, look, he, the past couple of years, you know, with Clemson and other teams, you know, it's not, yeah, Bama's defense is great, filled with athletes. They could be scored upon a lot. Yeah. And LSU has an offense that can do it. So that's that's but LSU's why – defense – let me counterpoint that. And, and LSU's defense – it ain't the same defense it's been in the past, and they're you know like the Florida game. Maybe is this game going to kind of be a tit for tat, and then whoever makes the mistake, the, the second mistake, or whoever's got the ball last, or special teams, is that what it's going to come down to, Luke? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> let me. Let me I, like tell you. I like this new. Way. I'm going to direct the question. Just mm-hmm. yeah. The reason that we you need to believe that we can beat. Alabama or LSU can beat Alabama this year is that this is different than any other year. Like this is a different, the whole team is different. You were saying, but the defense isn't the same, but the offense is good. Well, that's different. We, we know that we can, apparently we can't beat them when the offense is bad. The defense is good. <laughs> right. Or we did it one time. We did it one time. We can't even score points. Ago. Right. Yeah. So it's tough. We can't cross the pit. It's, it's tough. But w- w- this is a new team. It's a new look. Like that's, we don't know if we can beat them, and you know, I'm not. No one's going to come out and say, "Well, LSU definitely going to beat Alabama," but we have a chance. I mean, you even look at the Vegas spread; it's six and a half. That's a beatable. That's a winnable game. Yeah. If Las Vegas yeah. is six and a half, that's you know, it, I mean, it's not a toss up, but it's a winnable game. Well, three of those points are right, just for Alabama being at home. Right. It's it's, so, it's a winnable, and and look, at, at, you know, you say our defense is, is a little iffy, and sure, we've got some question marks here and there, but. One of the strengths of Alabama's team is their receiving core. I mean, uh, you know, you're going to yeah. see like the six the six top receivers in this game are all are all going to going to going to play on Sunday, but LSU's, the, you know, the, the pair of LSU cornerbacks, I believe, can, you know, can I, I think can do a good enough job on them. And then there's the whole, I mean, the Tua. We don't know to a high ankle sprain. Is Tua going to play? Is he not going to play? That I mean, that's that's obviously. I mean, that's huge. 
You know? So he got surgery for it too. That's weird. Who gets surgery on a high ankle sprain? You would I mean then you should have a sprain. Is 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 Bud Kilmer on that staff? <laughs> yeah. So Luke, and you, you talk about the difference and the whatnot, and you're on campus. What is the feeling yeah. on campus this season? So the feeling, like we all talk about it, but it it just it, whether it's my friends and the people I work with, they're like, this is weird. Like, this is weird. And when, it's unfamiliar territory. <laughs> you no, know, at least with less miles, we got consistency. We knew what was going to happen every year, and it kind of felt nice, you know. We, we you felt mama. safe we in your mama's arms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, now I'm like, oh my god, I have a like, this hope. That's the word. And we're like, okay, so like, what's gonna happen? Or, or are we gonna? We don't know. We don't know. The feeling is that we really, like we say, oh, we say this every year, but we really feel it this year. That right. this could be the season where we win the game. You know, it puts us in a great position for the rest of the year. Undefeated, number one already. Right. <sighs> so it's magical in a sense. It's that. Oh, very that, much so. And it kind of, you know, if the way you're describing it is the the way. I felt as, as a Saints fan in 2006, yeah. even not even 09, 06, when Sean Payton came in with Drew Brees that very first year. Yeah. It's kind of like they're winning after a like, three and 13 season. And yeah, like, three and 13. Like, uh, uh, the first couple of wins, you're like, yeah, they'll fuck it up. Man. It's like, it was Cleveland. I mean, right, come on, it's Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah. It's yeah. Cleveland. <laughs> well, the other thing is, Coach, so I went to a Coach O press conference today, and uh, a lot of notable people there. That was weird. I've never seen the room like that. But he said that. In which I don't even think about this, but Joe Burrow might just go down as like the most important player in LSU history, depending on what happens. If yeah. I mean, it could it could happen, you know, depending what happens the rest of the season. But it's like we could be watching the best, the most important player, yeah, for LSU ever. You know, they have another Heisman winner and they have national championships, but this is different. It's just different. Yeah, well, come come in where they changing the identity of the of of LSU. For an yeah. identity that's been like you put it has been established by Les Miles and Coach yeah. O comes in and and Coach O he's changed a little bit of the identity you know he's changed the tone he's changed the voice right. a little bit of yeah. LSU yeah. <laughs> but this Joe Burrow meals. is his like that's yeah. isn't that kind of the thing that <laughs> First of all, hold on. Let's hold it down. First of all, only Coach O is is like strong and man enough to hold a steaming hot pot of gumbo <laughs> in his bare arms. <laughs> it's like a shirt off. It's, it's a cast iron pot. <laughs> right. It's heavy and it's hot, but it doesn't affect Coach O. Yeah, just yeah. I'll hold it with my vocal cords. <laughs> all right let me read some comments this is going back by the way because these guys have been busy while we were talking all right chris former with miles we ran into a brick wall over and over that was bama's strength yeah. with our passing game we actually stand a good chance to win scott greenbone said it would be a track meet todd bourgeois joined the viewing people if mordecai if tua isn't 100 percent healthy i can see the tigers winning it close okay so he thinks it comes down to two. Uh, Green Bomb, it will come down to special teams. Honestly, which team tackles better? And which, well, why do you think – this is from Mordecai. Why do you think – oh, and Dave Miet's watching. Why do you think Joe Burrow has been so much more impressive this year compared to last year? Okay. It, 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 they talked about it. They talked about it this whole season. And it comes down to Anzminger, the uh, and Joe Brady, the two guys on offense and the coaches. They – um. They put it so last year they didn't let it loose, like they you know they still had him on reins, and then this season they've completely bought in and everyone's bought in and put this new system in, and it's the spread offense. You know we didn't see it that much last year. We're really seeing it like utilized this year, and that's the difference. I think he had it this whole time. You know he's got the confidence, he's got the swagger. You can see it. I mean he's got the ability, but now he's. They designed the offense to, to match his strengths. And, well, he's born in, and, yeah. and this this is what he ran in high school. I mean, yeah, you know, he's yeah. comfortable. He's he's yeah yeah. He was at it Ohio is. State. It is it it is kind of crazy that I mean he's like he's the Heisman front runner right now like that's kind of absurd yeah. like clearly I wish I would have fucking been on it <laughs> in the summer when you could have got great odds well, we um, but, but but one thing I, one thing I think is going to be a, a key to the game is the offensive line can they can they block those defenders can they give him time to throw that's you know if if, if Burrow's got time to throw then yeah, yeah we're we're gonna we're gonna score 30, 40 points All I, right. I have no, no doubt so. All right, and it's just like a Florida game. 
the Florida game, yeah. we didn't get sacked once. Mm-hmm. That's just, we won that game. All right. And so then I, I want to just point out, and which, you know, broke today, Michael Divinity is not on the team anymore for, we're going to call them personal reasons. Luke, I understand if you don't want us to talk about it or you can't talk about it or not. No. Maybe you can. I mean, I can, I can what do you know just, inside? Yeah, I can tell. I, I can tell you what. Were you smoking weed with the Venice last night? Yeah. <laughs> we, it, it was fun. It was worth it. No, but, <laughs> what really? What what happened? What no happened knows, was no one. Yeah. We had no too much gumbo. Yeah, yeah. We ate it all somehow. Nobody, uh, somebody spiked my gumbo. <laughs> yeah. It's That's not feeling. Like. Yeah. No, I think you said gumbo pop. What? <laughs> right. Uh, right. Um. No, no one knows what what the reason Michael Divinity left. For now, they've said it's personal reasons, um, and it was he left on his terms. Michael Divinity left on his terms, and Coach O said the door's not shut for him to return. He said there's a chance he can come back this season. So I, I don't know the reason, but it said it, for now it's personal reasons, and the door, he can return. The door's not closed. So, so Ken, do we have? You know the, I mean, who else who are we gonna have? Is, do we have somebody that's gonna be able to step up in his place and 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 play well enough? I mean, yeah, yeah, we have uh, Caleb Von Chase on. He's gonna fill a lot of the snaps, uh, which he's been injured a good portion mm-hmm. of the year. Um, and there's another guy. And I want to say his name is Logan Thomas, but I don't know his first name for 100. percent But the, Coach O talked about him today, and uh, he's gonna fill in too. And he, I mean. We have it's LSU. They get five stars and four stars. Like it's not we're not gonna Saints. They next man up. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, well, and, and to that same point, uh, Divinity missed like what three or four games this year already. Yeah. So we're you. It's not like all of a sudden we there's a hole that we're not used to to, to playing with. So, so I'm like, not, yeah, I'm not. I agree yeah. with Luke. I'm not concerned that his absence will affect the outcome of this game. And he's good. He's good. Yeah. But Drew Reed was good, too. He's really good. And we yeah. won five games without him. So. Yeah. Now, if Michael Thomas, if Michael Thomas goes down, LSU yeah. is fucked. <laughs> right, yeah. Right. yeah, right? If Michael Thomas goes down, LSU is definitely yeah. fucked. <laughs> all right. That's all I got for LSU, unless y'all got something else. I'm going to go back. Thank you. Good. I'm just, um, you know, I, I really wish it was it was going to be a night game and not uh, and not 2.30, oh, but. Actually, yeah. quickly, talk amongst yourself yeah. while I'm going to make a drink about stuff. Well, yeah. Okay, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah. Why? 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 They, they wanted to waste it on Notre Dame. It's it's even stupid. Like, oh, we can only have one primetime game a year. Well, you're gonna have LSU, Bama. You know, the number one and number two teams. Very rarely does that happen in the regular season anymore. I mean, I think the last time right. was was the last time we did the game yeah. of the century. You know, number one. So and it's it's very either. frustrating. Yeah. It it it. We have well, LSU Ole Miss at six thirty. Woohoo! Yeah. 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 Thank God. That's <laughs> right. Fun right. Um, but I, I don't know. It's gonna be a fun game to watch either way. Like as a neutral fan, I mean, everyone's gonna tune into this game, which is really cool. Uh, and I mean, the winner probably will win the Heisman like the, the quarterbacks. You you would think so. I mean, unless I mean, even if God forbid LSU were to stumble somewhere coming in. You know, yeah, I mean, like, if he goes out and throws 300 yards, three touchdowns against Bama, yeah, I mean, I think that's solid- – it's crazy, but I think that solidifies – Yep, yep. It's absolutely insane that we I'm might have – so excited. I'm so excited. I, right? Right? I'm Again, so that's, that, that, that's that's what we're talking about. Like, we have – with this, we, there's a real – there's a real chance here. You know, this, like, yeah. we could just – we're just going to so fucking outscore him. There's a chance. You know, I mean, there's a chance. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, all one in a million talk. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, Mordecai did ask, did you guys hear Alabama's making preparations for Trump to attend the game? Wonder if he'll get booed like he did at the World Series. Be a lot cooler uh, if he did. <laughs> he'll probably get booed. Probably. Be, I don't think he will. I think there'll be more uh, cheers than boos, if I had to guess. This is Alabama, guys. Boo. This isn't a northeastern city. This is Alabama. And I think it's that's why he chose Alabama. He needs to go to one that he's sure not to get booed at. That would be hilarious if he gets booed, though. <laughs> Just considering all the other two that happened, it would be hysterical. Well, we'll, well, I guess we'll hear about it. Uh, let's see. Can we get a line on that? Ben, right. Line who on that guy? Ooh, there, there's, there, there's got to be. I, I mean, we could just hop, would... hop right over into... 
in, in, into Biloxi. There's got to be a line in one of those casinos. Yeah. Gun, if yeah. you're listening, can you let us know what the Silver Slipper Casino is? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the line on it? All right. So Ben Wright from the UK Saints podcast. That's who that guy is. LSU versus Bama at 1800. Kick. I'm not military time. I don't know what that means. But for us, UK means I'm. So I'm not moaning. Of course okay. you're not. Oh, I don't yeah. care about what Six happens o'clock. in your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you could DM me on the side, I'm, really, really curious. I'm doing a journal. It's for class. It's for class. It's for class. Yeah. All right, let's move into pickums. Okay. All right, man. Jeff continues to roll. Another four in one week for Jeff. It's four weeks in a row. Yeah, you were. You have. I mean, you you got off to such a bad start. You know, you were on your your in Hawaii and not even paying attention. And and now now that you're focused. You know, so, so you climbed all the way. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. It's like all, all the way. Coach O's a gumbo face. Coach O's. That's right? a cereal opportunity. <laughs> gumbo. Don't forget to eat your Coach O's. No. Your Coach O's. Oh, 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 no, wait. That's right. <laughs> you pour them in a big cereal bowl, first of all. Two uh, percent <laughs> milk. Cast, cast iron cereal bowl. <laughs> Coach O's, that's potato salad. What are you doing? <laughs> Two scoops. Yeah, yeah. Go Tiger. <laughs> All right. So, so, so you went four and one. You climbed back up. You're sitting at twenty one and nineteen. As am I. I went three and two last week. I'm also at twenty one and nineteen. So you caught me. Uh, I lost Jacksonville. Jacksonville just got completely smothered in Houston, and you know, just these the the Thursday games in London. <laughs> they're the official London team. They play well. You know what though? But that was that was that was Blake Bortles that plays well. In London, yeah. I, Gardner Minshew has never played in London before. That was my mistake. Yeah, he's new. And then, uh, and then I lost the Jets. Miami got off the Schneid and beat the Jets. Crazy. Called it insane. Actually, I, I did. I did I, say Miami wouldn't win, but they'd cover. But you know what? Hey, I'll take it. Yeah, and I was the only one to pick Baltimore. And Baltimore, you know, New England ran up against a real team and finally yeah. lost. Right? You know, the defense didn't even look that good. Which is crazy. Which is whoa! They were the all-time greatest defense yeah. in history. Scored more fantasy points than ninety uh, percent. When of you leagues. play Miami and the Jets <laughs> every week somehow, right? right. You can't play Miami, right. right? So yeah, so that so that's where we stand. You and I are both twenty-one and nineteen right now, above five hundred. All right. Oh, and something else, Scott did mention. We're going to do this this week if we can remember. We're going to go through the whole p- pickums, and then at the end, I'll repeat each of the games and the spreads just as a quick. Summary for those of you who listen and kind of want to wait and write down all your picks. Go ahead. All right. So coming on to week 10, uh, there are six teams. Oh, wait. On... Yeah, the you did recap, league. everybody. Yeah, the larger yeah. league. Uh, Green Bomb <clears throat> catches up with Mordecai and Stans Hobbs for a three-way tie. Who put two spaces between <laughs> that on the telephone? <laughs> <laughs> Catch up with them for a three-way <laughs> Three-way tie. It's not. Uh, it's not gay. It's not gay if it's a three-way. Oh, okay. Right. But Ben is moaning. So. Uh, uh, three, all right. Green. He ball, moans. Mordecai. Oh. Sand. <laughs> should I not moan. have moaned. He looks up, busted. <laughs> should not have moaned. <laughs> Sorry, that's way inside. This. We are not getting. Through. That is way inside. Is that what she said? <laughs> all right. Yeah. Oh, Jeez. All right, I'm gonna take this out of this. Too call. much. Green ball, right. Mordecai, Sands Hobbs, all at 25 and 15. Then we got Desi, and then Jake, Wheels, CJG, me, Jason, Christian Mino, Davis Douglas, Andrew, all at 21 and 19. Then you got your 500 club, Triple D, Who That Fits, Trevor Scott, Bruno, and on the loser side of things, you got Miso Mad, King Nola, Tom Ensign, Biz- Big Easy Mafia UK, the Mailman, James from the UK, Neil. Oh, who that be? Ryan Angier, Chris McGuire, Big Easy, Guy John, DJ Z, Pastor Not is at the bottom of the list. So, Neil, you have climbed your way off the bottom and somewhere in the middle of the bottom. <laughs> the bottom of the bottom. Okay, Jason, go. All right, so six teams on by this week. So there, there, there's not a lot to choose from. I feel like I say that every week, but this week it, it really shows. He does. But – We'll we'll start off our, our first two games are probably going to be our games of the week. Uh, the Carolina Panthers coming off uh, another win against Tennessee, winning thirty to ten. They travel to Green Bay to play the Packers, who who really got destroyed by the Chargers, which is crazy because you know there had to be probably seventy five to eighty percent Packers fans at that stadium, 
and it, yeah. it, it, it wasn't even close, you know. Once again, Aaron Rodgers, very overrated. You know, if you can't go in, if you can't go in, in into into LA and, and beat the fucking Chargers, look, I know Aaron Rodgers is a good quarterback. Okay, but you know, look, he's good. I'm not saying he sucks. Aaron Rodgers is very good, but for the longest time, he's oh, he he's he's the greatest. He's the greatest. He's the greatest. I mean, come on, dude, you got one Super Bowl. Good for you. So, so these games, I know. you know, and look, every, everybody like he dismisses it. Not- every. every Everybody was touting uh, the the revamp Green Bay defense, but they gave up I think 160, 170 yards rushing, <laughs> I think 70 yards apiece between Eckler and and Gordon to the Chargers. My guy. Um, so, <laughs> real quick, uh, Blaine did join and he's watching, and he, he did say Luke he's is a say stupid. He said yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep, oh, yep, yeah, you, oh, yeah. yep, you are a dud. Uh, Blaine, yeah, you're I'm late. True. Blaine missed, all these years. He's late. He missed the first. Uh, electrifying 48 minutes of Luke uh, really entertaining the crowd here shows up a little late. I bet Blaine was smoking weed with Michael Divinity. Mordecai said done jinx me last week on his. Okay, keep going. Jake. Yeah, he did. Okay, so so Green Bay is favored by five and a half. Five and a half. Green right, Bay five and a half. You've got against Green Bay Carolina Bay. and Green Bay. Carol- I'm taking Green Bay. Hmm. Wait, we're taking against the spread? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're definitely using the yeah, spread. Yeah. We've. Move. You've. Just making sure. Just making sure. Uh, they're right. This is. It's. It's, it's, it's been a while. Right. It's been a while since since you've been on when we uh, when we didn't use the spread. Right. We, we, okay. we implemented the spread a few years ago. I am gonna take Carolina because I don't think Green Bay can stop. I mean, nobody can stop fucking Christian McCaffrey. The only defense that's gonna stop him is the Saints defense, but other nobody else can stop McCaffrey. He's he's. Win it! Thank God I drafted. Him. He's winning my one of my fantasy oh, leagues. Oh, there it is. Oh, of course, he's good. He scores. Th- he scores thirty some points that. every week. Every week, okay. he's insane. And yeah, I hope he holds we... out for more money. <laughs> Blaine, yeah. I'll catch, Blaine said I'll catch the podcast. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, All right, Luke. Am I part of this? Am yeah, I yeah this? absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is this is called a bounce back game for uh, Green Bay. They're they're, they're going to cover this spread. They're like they're going to cover this spread. I don't know why. This just seems like it just pops out at me. I take Green Bay. If I was a gambling man, I would be taking Green Bay, but I probably also have no money. So, <laughs> take that not after you spent two hundred dollars on the NCAA football game. <laughs> it hasn't come out yet. That's why I still have a little right, bit. Right, right. Yeah, he's he's got a couple years to save up. He's for got him, a, so. he actually he's got a bet so that he can get the money to buy the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what I tell him. <laughs> All right, our next our next game, the Minnesota Vikings, uh, coming off a loss this week to Kansas City. I'd like to say thank you to all these AFC teams that knocked off some of the NFC contenders this week to really help the Saints. Green Bay took a loss. Minnesota took a loss. Uh, they traveled to Dallas to play a Cowboys team who is playing right now against the Giants. I don't know what the score is, but because it's the Giants, I would assume Dallas is going to win the game. 12-3 to 3 Giants. Oh, wow. Yeah, that'd be halftime. <laughs> That'd classic, classic Jason Garrett. Yeah. So this, so this game is in Dallas. Cowboys are favored by a three. The, the Minnesota will probably not have Adam Thielen again. He tried to play this week and he re-injured himself. So I would imagine he will not be playing next week. But Dalvin Cook's been 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 a beast so far this year, coming back off his injury. A couple so of solid good. teams. Um, I'll go first. Like- uh, Dallas, Dallas favored by three. Give me the Vikes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Give me the Vikes. Uh, I'm thinking the Vikings too. The Cowboys suck. <laughs> I don't think the Cowboys are good. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I the D- Dallas will win against like medium some half of their games against average teams. None except of the games. Giants. They'll win all their games. Against, yeah. Right. Shitty teams. Right. Except the Giants, and they're gonna lose all their games against actually playoff caliber teams and that's what minnesota is so wait 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 can i can i rescind that pick i forgot uh, the fact there's a pretty big fact that kirk cousins does not play well versus teams above 500 uh so oh, you're gonna me, use that yeah give me the okay right. okay I, was, I, I forgot or are they gonna be 500 wait 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 god i'm just gonna be no me. it's the last person to say something like that and pick against kirk cousins lost jason i did i did I, <laughs> well, I, I i was i was a believer like you i said he doesn't beat winning teams and he beat a winning team well okay but if the cowboys lose tonight they're four and four all right wheels just Ooh. showed up he says damn showing up late again wheels you know should we start later for you yeah <laughs> we could. Our, our time slot you know facebook only allows us to stream within a certain window 
<laughs> I guess I'll say the Cowboys. I'll okay. I said it. All right, do it. Yep. No, so that's right. I mean, you said it. He's only, let's yeah. put it this way. He's only beaten one team above 500. Yeah. Jeff, who are you taking? Oh, I took uh, Minnesota. Okay. All right, our next game, uh, not not good teams, but this should be a fun game. Should be a lot of points scored. The Arizona Cardinals coming off a, a close loss to the 49ers on Thursday night. I was really hoping they'd pull it out just because I want San Francisco to get a loss. Uh, but um, Kingsbury, while he may be an offensive mind, he, he's made some blunders as a head coach. They still have a, you know, a young quarterback. They're going to have the growing pains. They travel to Tampa. Who they're coming off an overtime loss to Seattle, but they put up a good fight against Seattle. They scored a lot of points. Jameis Winston still couldn't eat that W. <laughs> so hungry. Um, but there, I would assume this is going to be like a like a, another forty to thirty game. This game's in Tampa. Bucks favored by four and a half. Ooh. I know bad. that seems like way too many points to give up for Tampa. Between two and sixteen. Uh, David Johnson, it looks like, is going to return for Arizona this week. Although. Um, Kenya Drake played very well for for Arizona in his first game last week against the quote unquote good 49er team. And good, you know what the quotes? I know, I know, they're good. Yeah, they're good. They're good. I don't. I, he he, he, he can't admit it. I love it. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't want. I, yeah, I don't want to. I mean, look, they're they're 49ers schedule coming up. You know, they got Seattle on Monday this week. They're going to come to the dome. They still they have Seattle. A second time, they still have to play the Rams. Right, we're talking about Arizona, Tampa Bay. Vikings. Don't worry about that yet. Yeah. All right. Who you, uh, this is a really tough c- c- game because Arizona will win. The question is, by how much? Oh. No, Arizona. Yeah, Arizona's, Arizona's getting dogs. points. Classic so they, so they Jeff. And that's Wheels had asked for a classic Jeff, so I had to concoct one. So yeah. there it is. I am taking Arizona. I think that. Jameis is going to eat the W five at least five points. All right. Him, right. There you go. I think he's going to do it. I am going to – I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm taking Tampa as well. I just yeah. – My gut told me Arizona, and then, if yeah. you go, and then I had to go against it. Like I was like, wait, no, 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 it's a trap. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't trust. It's a trap. I don't trust Cliff Kingsbury. It's a trap. I just, yeah. You know. It's too young. All right, our next game, the Buffalo Bills coming off another win this week. Um, they've got a great record. They're probably going to make the playoffs, but they're another one of those teams. They get the New England schedule. You know, they haven't played anybody yet. I mean, their their wins, their, you know, their one loss is to is to New England, and, and they beat a bunch of bad teams. And they yeah. play another bad team this week, the Cleveland Browns. Ooh. Continue continue to shit the bed. Remember, remember when it, when everybody was on Cleveland? Ooh, Cleveland wins, oh, Cleveland. Winning the division? oh, they're going to play. <laughs> But this, this really shows the power of a head coach because Cleveland's head coach, Freddie Kitchens, sucks. They should have never hired him. I think I think he's going to be fired after the season, which they should do. Uh, they they are they are the worst coached team in the league, hands down, hands down. And yet somehow, and they're favored by right. They're favored by two and a half. They really are. They really oh, are favored. Oh, easy pick for everybody. I'm taking Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking Buffalo. I I'm like taking, Allen. I'm taking Buffalo as well. Allen plays well. They're finally giving the ball to Singletary, the running back. They're, he's they're good. Fa- he is. He's very good. They're they're phasing out Frank Gore, who Frank Gore moved up to either 90? fourth or fifth on the all time rushing list this week, well, which, which is insane when you think about. Like, say what pre- you want. That, go ahead, go ahead. Say what you want. <laughs> it just it just pretty much it's weird, but like like he's a Hall of Famer. Right? Yeah. Like, Gary, all, yeah. Like, Frank Gore is a Hall of Famer. He's like, what? Why not? Yeah. Okay. He's good. Yeah. Why not? Wait, why not? Why he's not? just been, he's been, he's been very good, he's but it been hasn't been like. Since 1932. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he, he, yeah, he is, he is the, the, know, the accumulator one of stats. I remember more than anything is that big, long, freaking bust out run from, on, it's like probably like 2001 or something. I don't know. When he's with San Francisco, and he made a name for himself, and he's just been a so- he has been a solid. He's steady, he's been very solid running back every Thank year you. ever since. He was a fantasy stud in his early career, but then and he kind of just became a steady guy. And and you know what? He's a Hall of Famer because he's, he avoided career-ending injury. Well, his he had his career-ending injuries, and in co- he he tore his ACLs in college. Yeah, yeah, which is forever ago now. I, was I born? <laughs> No, probably not. Shit, you might 
Like, I don't know if I was born for that. <laughs> yeah, the, the NFL celebrating its 100th year, it also coincides with Frank Gore's birthday. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Green bomb. He, okay. We can make fun of him. He, I think he's going to get like 150 to 200 carries this year. Well, not if they phase him out. They are phasing him out, but he ran the ball a lot in the first half of the season. So far. Yeah. Which is like just weird. Right. It's just weird. And with his I mean, are, in, in their, day, except enough, he can't handle it anymore. Yeah. I mean, in, 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 in their loss to New England, I think he ran for 100 yards against New England. When, yeah, when I started in that league of fantasy. I, I did too. Did. I had, I yeah. have him, I have him in Singletary. It's like I got Singletary. He was hurt. Oh shit! I guess I better pick up Frank Gore. And I mean, he didn't fun. kill us. He did a job. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, yep, he, yep. He didn't kill us. Good job. <laughs> the wheels. Of so <laughs> that was that was your that was your your six. <laughs> that was your Frank yeah. Gore. Uh, <laughs> three of the, of the week. week. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Hall of Fame. All right. And now our shitty game of the week. And it, it was it it, it it was hard to find a, a super shitty game because I think one of these teams is decent, and that's Detroit. Uh, they came off a loss this week, but they they've been frisky. They're they're hovering around five hundred. They traveled to Chicago to play a Bears team that is reeling. They're sitting there at three and five. Good old wait, Ryan. Wait, would Pace. you say that Chicago is in a tailspin? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't. I, I didn't read you, you didn't. You didn't put the the tailspin theme song in there. I thought you were going to when last week. Oh, when it, for the tailspin episode. Oh, I must have been. No, I did. That was how I ended the show. Oh, I guess. You didn't want okay. to listen to the show. Got it. Okay, Damon. I, I I didn't make it through the end. I pulled the name. Sorry. So anyway, so so this is in Chicago. So the fans are already against against Trubisky. I mean, they are like, yeah, he's done. So I think Matt Nagy talked about benching Trubisky, but he didn't. Do they actually start Chase Daniel this week? Yeah. That I think could be a possibility. I mean, the, the, the Trubisky era is over, right? I mean, it's over already. It's not over. It's not over. It's over. Oh, it, it's a, it's, it's not a, over. It's it's, it's, it's over, over in Chicago. It's over in Chicago. It's, it's over the from. fans. Why is the Matt Nagy era not over then? Like, why is the Dwayne Blue? I mean, I know I've watched Trubisky play. I know. Yeah, he's know. not good. He's not good. <laughs> I don't know why I like him, but I just don't want it to be over. I like the Mitch Trubisky era. Oh God. It's kind of fun. I like it as a, as a someone who hates the Bears. I love the Mitch Trubisky era. Era. Yeah. I almost said area. You, what am I a three? You, I, I was very excited that he came back to play against the Saints. <laughs> yeah. Well, All right. What's the spread? Bears favored by three. Okay. And, and like the problem is Trubisky's poor play is now dragging down the Bears defense. Who, the who elite was, who, defense. Right. Yeah. Who, has been, who has been very mediocre. Elite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Detroit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm I... Detroit. Yeah. You are You're taking Detroit. Yeah. Look at me. Reluctantly. <laughs> slight very reluctant. reluctant. With slight reluctance. You, 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 you can't ever take Detroit and feel feel comfortable and yeah. confident. Yeah. With yeah. very much it's... slight reluctance and apprehension, I will take the Detroit Lions. Is that Coach? Yoda, Coach Yoda, <laughs> Coach Yoda. Yeah. Coach Yoda. Oh, there's another. See, guy. you're you're on to something now. Gumbo, eat your must. <laughs> do or do not. That yeah. Is, there is no try. Tiger goes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I am gonna I'm gonna take the Bears because I think Chase Daniel plays this week in the Bear and the and the Bears defense is excited that they don't have Trubisky at quarterback. You're taking the Bears. Bears. All right. I'm taking the Bears. I like the take. It's a good take. I like so, the idea of how it yeah, happens. Will said, right, right. It's, it's, it's a good idea in theory, but when Trubisky rolls out there in the first quarter, like yeah, I'm, all right, it's shot. And for Trubisky, all right, yeah. so Will, wait for Trubisky. Will said uh, over under on when the booze start. I've got pregame. Pregame. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent pregame. When, when he runs out the tunnel. Warm up. Yeah. Right. All right. So to recap, mm-hmm. we've got Carolina at Green Bay. Green Bay favored by five and a half. We got Minnesota at Dallas. Cowboys favored by three. Arizona at Tampa. Tampa favored by four and a half. Buffalo at Cleveland. Somehow Cleveland's favored by two and a half. Detroit at Chicago in our shitty game of the week. Bears favored by three. All right, folks. So make sure you tweet at Dome Patrol Podcast and tell us your picks in time before the 12 o'clock kickoff or whatever time in your time zone that is. And when I like it, I've recorded it. If I missed your game, you can always retweet it at me. But wait till like next week's show because lately I'm not recording your shit until Monday. So as long as you got the timestamp, we're all right. All right. Now we're going to 
go a little opposite order of what we used to do because we usually do look at him tweets before okay. the pickums, but uh, we did get a few tweets in this week that I forgot to do, so let's back up and go to look at him tweets. <laughs> right. Back it up, Mike. Bring it back. Yeah. Whoa! All right, a couple of tweets came in. This is our pre-show stuff. We got so consumed by the live stream comments that we didn't even do look at the tweets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to see how many times I can make you say it. All right, so let's see. We got one. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, this is from RJ Savage. I feel like this is the year to really put the Falcons in their place. I say we double 28-3. And put their second 50 burger of the season. Score prediction 56 3. I love it. <laughs> yeah, please. You're right. Do you, yeah. So, do you really expect, and I hope yes, that Sean Payton is going to kind of craft this game to make it 28 3 or some. Probably. Der- Probably. Some, you know. I mean, he, he knows how big the rivalry is for the fans. Like, he knows we hate the, the Falcons and, and this is what we want, you know. He knows they're a shitty team. They're fucking reeling. I mean, obviously, win the game first and foremost. But once we get out to that big lead, you know, he's he's gonna fuck with them. Mm-hmm. Although, if you want to, if he wants to put up a fifty burger, I'm all for it. All right, and you know what we're gonna do? This is a look at him tweet slash Saints preview uh-huh. slash Falcons hate week all combined into one massive mega segment because that's what you do on Falcons hate week because all of our tweets are about the fucking Falcons. All right. right. Turner knows best, which is also J. La Belle Letois. You remember him? <laughs> All right. I remember. I always look forward to ruining the Falcon season, but now they already did it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> See, and then he did the hmm, kind of face, you know. <laughs> Seeing as they have not have no shot at winning, Ryan's shook. Quinn is on the hot seat. Give me something to watch for, so I can justify to the wife keeping it on after it's forty-five nothing at the half. <laughs> Uh, Thomas Morse, Thomas Morstead's corner kicks, and because it's the Falcons. Corner kicks. Now, yeah, and and only, le- go ahead. No, yeah, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say you only get to watch us bash the Falcons every so often. Like it's only it's just three hours out of your day. You already have it cut out. That's true. You go for it. You just watch it. That's right. Enjoy. This yeah, definitely. That, this is a game that you you know you're grilling, or maybe you're cooking some gumbo. You know, and, maybe, and, maybe, <laughs> maybe. And it's okay if you miss a play, but you probably don't want to miss a play because they're all going to be fun. <laughs> all right, and you can listen. You can listen to the commentators try to create a game out of not a game. You know, well, uh, all right. Big, big easy guy, John. Packers lost. Vikings lost. And the 49ers squeak by Arizona. Does this tell us anything new about the NFC race for the top seed, or is it just one week and it's not a big deal? I mean, it, it does solidify that I think the Saints – not that I didn't before because, you know, I mean, look, I'm a homer. I obviously think the Saints are the best team, but I do think the Saints are still the best team in the NFC. And we're going to find out. You know, San Francisco comes here. That's going to be a massive game. It would probably be flexed. At the min- <laughs> as of now, it's scheduled for noon. I would imagine at the minimum it'll get flexed to the three o'clock game, but it could get flexed to Sunday night, especially if San Francisco keeps winning and we keep winning. That, that's that's going to be a big game. But I just I am glad that the Packers lost because we needed you know, that. I, we needed that. Well, I I, I wouldn't want to have to. Not that I think we couldn't win up there, but I'd rather not have to go to to Lambeau in January. Well, but that's a game we don't like. That's a team we don't have as much control. Like the 49ers, we will play, and so we can win a tiebreaker if we have to with them. The Packers, we need help with. So, and another benefit of us, we've already beaten Seattle. So that that's that's definitely that's a great tiebreaking advantage to have so far because Seattle's playing really well too. Yeah, that's true. It All doesn't right. really tell us anything new. I, we, we, it's, it's the same. It's, it's the NFL. There's a lot of parody. All right. Uh, the, we did get a comment. Uh, Christian uh, Montague is watching. And what? That's right. Wheels says, here's how to fuck with the Falcons the best. Get up to a nice lead and then coast just enough so that blank does not fire Quinn yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Greenbaum says, Papa I should do a promo. If the Saints score 50 or more, free chicken sandwiches. Oh, shit. <laughs> No, but I don't, no, they can't only redeem them on yeah. a Sunday. <laughs> they have to have four hundred thousand new workers. Right. <laughs> so Mordecai said Falcons are so desperate that they promoted the wide receivers coach Raheem Morris. Remember him? They yeah they they they, they, they flipped defensive the defensive plays from now on. 
they, they they flipped around a bunch of their assistant coaches. They gave them all different jobs. I mean, this is just the panic move. Because at the beginning of the season, Dan Quinn, supposedly a defensive coach, took over the defense, and they're – This is something that the marketing department thought would sell tickets. I guarantee you. That's the Falcons. The Falcons are nothing, – Nothing can sell tickets for the Falcons. No, they don't sell tickets. The, the Falcons go. are a marketing department coming up with fucking gimmicks to, to, to try and come up with whatever they think people want. You know? Got a hot dog. What if we let the wide receivers go? <laughs> Call plays for the defense. Ooh, everybody come see. Rise up. What other slogans can we come up with? That... All right, so uh, <laughs> S.149R.29S.15 and 16, the Stormtrooper, remember him? He uh, tweeted to us. I don't know, I'm going to see if I can read this right. <laughs> Falcon suck. <laughs> okay, there it is. Okay. Yeah. It's a little blurry, but I okay, I get it. And then he did I think show. he did it. I think he did it justice. He did it justice. Yeah. yeah. We, we 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 all knew what we all knew what what, what yeah. you were getting at, what he was saying. There it is. You see it. You did yeah. I. All right. I'm, my acting skills need a little brush. I'm like Alvin Kamara. All right, Will <laughs> Will tweeted to us, even though he is also commenting locally uh, or live. Well, I was under the impression that the Patriots well, had a good defense. Where is that? Because right now they look like the Falcons in the second half of the Super Bowl. Well, you know, when you don't get to play the Jets, Dolphins, Giants, or Redskins every week, you know, it's not going to end up the same way. And not to give the Patriots credit because they don't need it. They played a pretty good offense. They played a pretty good offense. They did. Like, uh, is that game great? Of, is that game do more for Baltimore's street cred than it does New England? Like tarnishing New England's, right? I mean, it kind of lets us know yeah. that Baltimore is legit. They are who we thought they were, or some people thought they were, and they might be the front runner for the Super Bowl berth, not win. Yeah. Right. Well, they showed no. us. They showed us that they have an identity too, and they can stick to it. Yeah. Like, that's who they are. And they're not going to change, and they're going to win games doing it. Yeah, in- in- Ingram ran really well for them. All right, yeah, he did. He did. Y'all miss him? Yeah, so much. I miss him. Yeah. All right, Aaron King. Now that the Pats have been exposed, sticking with that game, does New Orleans get promoted to number one in the power rankings on their day off? I like no, no, they're good. The radar, but their comic, but the comic value is also good. San Francisco doesn't count. Drink a box for me, Jason. Who that? Uh, yeah, look, it's right here. I've uh, I've been drinking it. Um, I mean, San Francisco, I would assume, is going to stay number one just because they're undefeated. They're going to leave them there until until they lose yeah. to Seattle on Monday night. Then they'll they'll pump us up there. But again, I just you know, I've I've said it before. I'm not I'm not a fan of power. Power rankings mean nothing to me. Doesn't matter. Like we 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 all watch the games. We all know who are the good teams and who are not the good teams. I don't need somebody ranking the team. Ooh, the Saints are number one in the power rankings. Whoa. Just don't need it. <laughs> Go Tigers. Yeah. All right. Greenbaum <laughs> said that to have them play Ingram in the Super Bowl would hurt, but I still want to whip their ass. All right. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be what it is, you know? Yeah. All right. That's all the tweets I had for us. All right. So let's wrap up the podcast with any other comments about the Saints Falcons game. It's kind of, we're still, we're kind of in Saints preview. I mean, I, I would normally say, like, how do you beat this team? You know, if we're playing anybody else, show up, <laughs> show up. Yeah. Put your uniform on. <laughs> so the real question is, pretty simple. how do yeah. you, which, which method do you think the Saints will take? <laughs> uh, I mean, is, is, does Matt Ryan get benched halfway through this game? Well, he made, I know he's, he's been injured, so he didn't even, Matt Shaw played the last game for the Falcons before their bye. So it's possible that Matt Ryan doesn't even see the field. I hope he does. Because I, you yes. know, I want to, I want to see him shit in his pants again. Like five picks, right? Eighty yards, right? I mean, you, you know, you know, they're not going to run the ball, no, at all. Matt Ryan's going to try to throw it. Their offensive line sucks. We, we might get, we might sack Matt Ryan ten times this week. I, this is the week where you know, like Davenport might get three sacks, Jordan might get two sacks, Rankins and, and Onyemata are going to get a sack here and there. One of our Gardner Johnson might come in and get a sack. It, I think it's just going to be an annihilation. Yeah, yeah. The Saints and the over seem to be the play too. So uh, like, you, you know how usually, like, no matter how good or bad either team is, this is always a close game. I, it, but every now and then, you get those years where the Falcons are so bad that it's a blowout. So, and that's what it sounds like you're calling. And we know it, and we know it. 
Like it, it's going to be a nah. so. The question is how, at what point do you take Breeze out and put Teddy in, <laughs> or do you? Ten nothing. <laughs> what is ten nothing? Yeah. We got it. We got it. Dude, that would be a nice insult. It's kind of like you that know would, what? You know what? No, we don't need Breeze for this one. I mean, if if Let if, Teddy if start. Peyton, if, if Peyton wants to come up with a new way to say fuck the Falcons, like that would be it. Just to pull Breeze way early. Yeah, we're, we're going to throw Teddy out here and it's and we're still going to no. beat you 40 to 3. Pull Breeze at half. Put Teddy in the third. Pull Teddy and put Taysom in the <laughs> and, then, and then let's just keep running the score up. <laughs> we'll still score, right? <laughs> treat, it, yeah. treat it like a preseason game number three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did Taysom just throw it to himself and catch it in the right. end zone? That was, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's in high, high school. Uh, put this guy through. Uh, Mike uh, Wheels said uh, Falcons just signed their fifth punter this year. Is that true? Fifth punter? That, that's the word in the street. Yeah. And they lost wow. the new to the Patriots. So, well, they didn't. They I mean, traded well, him. They didn't. Whatever. You know what I mean. But Right. Dude, right. I mean, they, there is no chance, no way in hell that this team assembles itself to. <laughs> To play yeah. a, a football game in the National Football League, unless against the, the receiver same? coach, unless the receiver coach turns out to be actually a genius <laughs> move. Oh, ah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray Morris is a defensive genius. You're right. Yeah, which didn't know it. That's because Raheem Morris is probably sitting on the sidelines all the time, like whispering in Dan Quinn's ear. Man, you know what they should have done in that? He's like the armchair quarterback. They should have <laughs> yeah. done that kind of defense. They should have done that. Well, no shit, asshole, you know. Because Raheem Morris is going to outcoach Sean Payton. That's what's happening, y'all. That's, yeah. that's what they're banging on. It's their best chance. <laughs> Put JT Barrett in for the kneel at, at the end <laughs> of Mordecai. All right. Y'all got anything else about this game? Any just general shitting on – Atlanta in any way, you know. Fifty-five to three is the final score. Fifty. Oh. I, I say we. I say we get fifty-five. All right. I say give, we don't let up. We just keep going. Give me uh, forty-five seventeen. Oh, you are giving them seventeen? All right. I will take um, fifty-six to three. Oh, ah, only for the <laughs> obvious reasons. It's a. What do you call that? It's a, Derivative of I don't know whatever I don't know math. It's what, it's, uh, twenty-eight, 28 squares, times two, like yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because twenty-eight's too low. Now I, I honestly, low. all right. So my honest pick, that's what I would like it to be, some kind right. of twenty-eight three right. or whatever. But in reality, I actually think this might be the shutout. This I don't think Atlanta scores a point. I am gonna even go so far. Bold prediction, sure to go wrong. They don't even cross the fifty-yard line in this game. Wow. That's how save it. Let's see it. Let's see. I just saved this clip in my mind. Save it. I'll come back to this and I'll be like, "See the time you said this? I said See the time you said that? You were right. Yeah. That's what you can say. You were right. I can't yeah. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> just clap. David me. Parkinson, watching you guys from Australia. Love the show. Ah, good day, mate. Put another shrimp on the barbie. That's terrible. That's terrible. Well, that's, that's racist. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 sorry, David. Sorry, David. Yeah, Jeff didn't, didn't know it. what he was doing. It, Jeff, he, yeah. he was good. He had too much Popeye's chicken sandwich in him. He couldn't figure out what the hell he was he was thinking. Right. All right. Wheel says fifty six six. Just double the score. Twenty eight three in each half. All right. All right. Final thoughts. We are at the uh, moment where we have to end the show. Unfortunately. It's yeah. Fun. Uh, uh, final fun. thoughts. I, I'm I'm excited for the back half of the season. It is crazy to think that it's already week ten in the NFL season. I feel like just yesterday. Yeah, I feel like just yesterday, the season started, and now we're already in week ten. We're we're we're, we're yeah. halfway over. But you know, I'm um, I'm, ex- I'm I'm excited. You know, a lot of people didn't think we could recover from the way the season ended last year, and yet here we are again. You know, the the. <laughs> wow, that's right. How do you really feel? <laughs> I just showed you. You know the the but the, the the power of a strong organization, strong coach, strong players, and and look, uh, November is all division games for us. Four division games this month. Yep, it's big. So we got like the Patriots schedule now. Oh yeah, it's gonna Easy be win. All right, Luke. Final thoughts. Um, it's gonna be Dak. It's gonna be Dak still, just as I'm here on the podcast. Uh, I'm excited to see if I go five and zero. 
because I really feel like I am. Like I think I, all the choices I made were right. And, <laughs> it, it, and it feels like the Joe Burrow of pickups. Yeah, that's, they call me that. I don't know why they keep doing it too. And then I think it's the plastic I, I ass you got that you wear all over campus. Yeah, it's right. It's, it's me. I, I wear it every night before I go to sleep. And then uh, I'll I gotta do some. If Coach, if we win, if we beat Bama, I'll send. I'll send just the team a, a bowl of gumbo. Let's all do it. Let's just send the team a bowl of gumbo. Do it. Gumbo. If they be Bama. If not, we'll, we'll buy all the gumbo and hoard it. Well, save it uh, for next year. Go to yeah. Uh, they, they, don't, they get pasta lie instead of gumbo. Yeah. <laughs> they oh, don't get the good stuff. What a, what a punishment. Tiger. <laughs> right. Yeah. Go Tigers. <laughs> Daniel Benet. Sorry, I'm late. Love the show. You guys are awesome. All right, thank speaking you. of us being awesome, watch this awesome ending. That's all the show we have for you right now. We're going to thank our loyal listeners for downloading each week and telling all of your friends about the Dome Patrol podcast, everybody. Hint, hint. You can follow us on Twitter for daily conversation. You can like us on Facebook to watch these live broadcasts as we record our shows. And you can also subscribe on YouTube to watch or listen as an alternative to your podcast app. And if you don't listen to us on your podcast, you can listen to us the old-fashioned way. Dome Patrol podcast. Com. Say bye bye, donkeys. Bye bye, weak donkeys. Luke, say good night, who that nation. Good night, who that nation. Or say whatever you want. Gumbo. Good. Actually, I usually say good night, tigers. That's what I'm going to say. Good night, tigers. <laughs> there you there go. There you go. Uh huh. All right. Let me, uh, I got I to gotta actually end the show for real, though. <laughs>